Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Market Psychology 101, where we look for value in the markets when there's fear and are cautious when there's greed. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the stock market as well as the Magnificent Seven Stocks and seeing if there's any indicators that can show us where we may be going as the Fed is most likely going to be cutting rates next week. And let's start off with crypto fear and greed. Sorry, let's start off with CNN fear and greed. I'm in crypto brain because the last two videos I did. So still down in fear on CNN and on Pi Vesting. It came down a little bit and now it has started to go back up. So still in the upper end of greed, right below extreme greed. Crypto, I do videos on that every week, whether it be the rainbow chart, usually the live streams, people seem to enjoy talking about crypto a little bit more. I talk about Bitcoin mining stocks as well, but crypto is still down into fear and each week i also do a video on the bitcoin cycle so subscribe if you want to hear more about that and if crypto investment is something that interests you as well so going to the s p 500 as you can see on the weekly it's still undecided whether or not we're getting a buy signal here uh, typically after these hollowed out candles start to then turn green with this buy and sell signal going in the positive direction that's when we'll get the signal i'm wondering if we go to a different buy sell signal this one's more of a leading indicator if it says any different and that one's still showing a sell signal so stock market it's probably going to be pretty volatile into rate cuts and after rate cuts i i still might uh think that there would be some increased volatility for a week or two i'll get to why that is in a second but on the weekly it does show a sell signal there the vix that's the volatility of the markets and as you can see the volatility is still relatively high remember not too long ago the volatility was just remaining really low and typically typically when the volatility is up above 25 30 those tend to be good times the dollar cost average in we had that flash sell-off something like 10 percent in the markets but for as high as the volatility spike was and there's been higher volatility spikes before the price wasn't as low or as deep of a value as it's been during those times so there's only been two times the volatility has spiked higher in recent memory and that was the covid crash as well as the great financial crisis and a lot of these times where volatility was a little lower much better value in prices so i am wondering if there is more of these to come in the next year or so and maybe there's just going to be a normal of high volatility i i kind of go back to the uh, dot-com bubble you can see how there's multiple volatility spikes and it never got as high as it did in the gfc or COVID crash you know more black swan events if you will uh, the dot-com bubble everyone knew was coming and right now we're getting into an ai bubble that everyone knows we're in but you can see the volatility never stayed pretty low it just stayed elevated so if that's what we are going to be seeing with the vix that's something i'm loosely expecting let's go to the yield curve because the yield curve inversion and uninversion is typically been a signal in the past that when this uninverts we have about a year-ish uh give or take before the economy is in a recession so something to keep an eye on it's still hugging the zero line as far as the weekly candle goes so yes it is uninverted and the yield curve inversion has stayed inverted for one of the longest times ever if not the longest time ever and uh, we can just go back in history and you can see august 19 obviously we had the 2020 sell-off people believe that was going to happen regardless uh, the yield curve was inverted you can see here december of 06 uninverting around 07 uh, up here is when the great financial crisis was happening so again it can take a little bit of time and it was inverted here in 2000 before the dot-com bubble uh, crashed so again we can go to the s p 500 let's put this back on log and the yield curve by the way it inverts typically within a month or two of the first fed rate cuts and i drew a or put a vertical 
red line here for the first rate cut. So do know the yield curve uninversion happened pretty close to that. And you can see the markets tanked uh, pretty much a little bit later. Now, I'm a little hesitant to say that that's exactly what's going to happen because something to know with those two rate cuts as opposed to the rate cut that happened in 2019, there was a rate cut here. Let's go to this Fed chart. And I believe, yes, it has a 2019 one. I think you guys will see the difference pretty quickly is that when the first Fed rate cut is 25 basis points, whether 2019 or I'm kind of comparing the time we're in now to 1998, AI bubble, dot com bubble, albeit there's stuff going on with inflation and maybe inflation is going to be sticky. Who knows? But if there's only a 25 basis point cut, which that's what a lot of people believe is going to be the case then there's still room to run for the markets. Now, right now the markets suck. It's September. September usually sucks anyways. So I'm not ready to say that the markets are doing bad until October, November, December is looking bad. So if October through December does all right, I, and we get 25 base point cuts, I think we're more in this 2019, 1998 phase. But let's say the Fed out of nowhere cuts by 50 basis points. That could send shockwaves through the markets. And again, there's only so many data points here. And I don't invest purely off of just charts like this. You want to take what the market gives you. And every time things are different and you want to be flexible enough for it. And you also want to be prepared for the possibilities of what could happen. So do pay attention to rate cuts. It's one of the most important things happening the entire year. 25 basis points. There's still profits to be made in stocks and crypto, especially Meg7 and some of the top altcoins in crypto. Uh, 50 basis points. You might want to start investing more cautiously and waiting for more confirming signals rather than uh, investing with a bullish mindset. Not financial advice, but that'd be something uh, or a way I would be approaching it. Here's another chart that shows uh, that Fed rate cuts. As you can see, I, I think we're following more this dark green line. We had that 10% sell-off just like it shows back here a few weeks ago when that VIX spiked. Some of the stocks have come up a little bit as we're going into rate cuts next week. Maybe this is just on average. Maybe there's going to be another little correction and then away we go into Q4 seasonality. You can see when it is a recession, we just talked about 50 basis points cuts. This is typically what happens right after. So it's not that this eventually can't roll over because the yield curve on inversion and the rate cuts, all that takes time to have effects on the market. But again, all because we can be bullish for another year, give or take, does not mean it can't get very bearish after. Um, 1998 as we just talked about so let's go into let's go into the mag 7 stocks real quick and then we'll end the video there so nvidia 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 it has a sell signal it's been playing out now it looks like here on the weekly it has formed a nice base at the 3a2 and by the way there's two different ways you can draw these fib retracements if a stock is continuing to make higher highs and getting more into all-time highs it's pretty good to draw from the most recent low after a big correction to the high uh, if it's still within the range of not getting above the prior all-time highs or not too far above then you can draw a high to low uh, but here you can see it came down to the 382 sell signal played out it's also at the 20 moving averages and i think one's ema one's sma let's take a look at the daily chart so you can see actually that by the way you saw where the candle body closed this is where the wick got down to the wick got down to the 0.5 i believe we talked about this last week where Sometimes you don't always get the buy signal you want exactly when you want it, but you can set buy orders on Robinhood and other apps like that to get in at one of these fibs. And if you would have set a buy order at 103 bucks, then you would have been able to get in at this uh, single wick price right here. So if you did catch that, good job. You can see here it is battling. Uh, one last bit of moving average resistance, and then it has the 236 at 121 to battle with. So 
if it gets above 121 i'd say that's overall looking pretty good obviously there's some price action here uh in the high 120s that would have to get above uh but then you're looking 140 so right now it's looking like a pretty impulsive bullish move uh we'll see if it can continue microsoft microsoft what do we got so right now let's start off on the daily and just like nvidia look at this if you would have set a buy order at the 382 fib you wouldn't have gotten it it would have missed just by a little bit and so the lesson here is and i do this sometimes with buy or sell orders you can set them just a little bit below or above your target price uh, that way you don't miss it you don't always have to tag it exactly uh, you can see here with the prior all-time high that it didn't quite or maybe i just drew that fib wrong i just drew that fib wrong so i apologize here i am trying to talk like i know what i'm talking about but the fib's just not in the right place so never mind on what i was about to say uh, but right now it's on the moving averages on the daily needs to get above the 236 at 425 and should it get above that that's pretty bullish looking for microsoft so you can see a range here between the 100 and the 200 daily is it possible it just ranges back down sure but if it keeps making higher lows i think that's good for microsoft let's go to the weekly and we have a pretty skinny doji so it looks like it's getting ready to maybe form one of these green dot buy signals so keep an eye on that for microsoft doji does mean undecided so that's not bullish or bearish either way we need confirmation if it gets above that fib then i think it's confirmed apple we have a big weekly sell signal uh, happening right on the 236 so if it gets under 217 look for these 20 moving averages around 211 and the 382 around 206 that the candle body got down to before uh, the wick got to the 0.5 there let's zoom in and see what we got for apple and apple on it on the daily showing us a little bit different of a picture so the weekly for me as a long-term investor that's what i like to look at more so uh to be patient the daily you can see uh this is already showing a little bit of a bounce and a correction off the 236 so as a buy signal on the daily we can see where that can bring it up to whether it can get above these resistances and the former high here this is a lower high uh, so if it doesn't make it above the 233 mark then it's probably not going to challenge these all-time highs that soon uh, but we'll see maybe it's just going to have a move up to somewhere around 230 and then back down um, but yeah right here having a nice bounce off the 236 fib let's go to amazon and amazon what do we got here let's zoom way out so this one this is how you can draw your fibs the other way so i drew from the high to the low because we're still in that range of the all-time highs way back here in 2021 and you can see there was a lot of resistance around that former all-time high around 188 and amazon's getting back up to it so it's going to challenge it again for the first second third fourth time it got above came back below five six it'll be the seventh time it's challenged it can it durably get above and stay above that's going to be the really the the real question or the important question here of what happens otherwise uh if not you can see right now we have lower highs since this peak if it can't get above the price of 190 and a half and it's another lower high then you can expect it to probably come um down to the 170 range so we'll see what happens there google google starting to have a little bounce around its former all-time high line so this is another uh fib drawn from the height of the low you can see it got to the 1618 we're close to it at 193 um, got near the 1618 came down and is having a nice little bounce off that former all-time high line so that's why we draw these fibs if you didn't draw a fib retracement it, it would be hard to tell why this is happening um, outside of drawing a trend line which would have just brought you back to the former all-time high anyway so it is having a little bit of support we'll see what it does last time it really fell it bounced off the 200 came up to the 100 and then came down <coughs> excuse me it's turning in the fall time get colder so anyways let's see what it does here off the 200 
as well as the 150 moving averages, whether or not it can get above those. Meta and then Tesla, and we'll finish there. Meta, so Meta, you know, this one surprises me how it continues to look like one of the strongest stocks there is as far as how it's holding up. So I, I still want to see it get to that 1618 level at around 568, 570. Um, but right now it's just kind of ranging in here and it is making higher lows. It is making uh, yet yeah, technically higher highs, just barely. So maybe Meta is getting ready to challenge that 570 range. Let's go take a look at it on the weekly. Weekly, it's got a sell signal, but it is forming a nice space at the 20. It's something I tell you guys about these moving averages. Whether on the weekly or the daily, see what moving average the uh, the stock, the crypto, is in love with. Which one does it seem to honor the most? When you look at this, you can see it's these red lines, the 20 moving averages. So that's the one I like the most. I don't think I uh, took a look at Google on the weekly. Uh, maybe I did. So sell signals playing out there. Just wanted to make sure I got that for you guys. So this one, maybe it's just getting ready for another bounce off that 20. It's one it's done many times before. If it does something different, then we will react accordingly to that. So uh, by the way, you know, as far as what I invest in Meta right here, if I really liked Meta, at this spot, I wouldn't. It's not as deep value as some of these bigger moving averages. I like of course, the 50, 100, 200. Um, again, I'd wait for confirmation on the buy signal. But also, when you just take a look at it in a very simple way, if you just look at the last year, is it within 10, 20% of its all time high or its yearly low? And right now, it's within the range of the all time high. So, uh, too rich for me. I would wait till it's more of a value and within the range of the yearly low. Uh, or testing out one of those longer moving averages. Last, let's take a look at Tesla. I don't think we took a look at it last week, but very interested to see what it's doing. Still in this wedge formation, I know it got above. You take a look at it on the monthly, that's still just a wick. Is it breaking above though? We can finally see a candle body on the monthly showing that, and we do have a weekly buy signal. So uh, came down, had all this support, the 100, the light blue, the 50, the orange, the dark blue, the 200 has a buy signal. Is it finally getting ready to break above the wedge? The true test is going to be this 618 Fib at 242. And you can see it did get above, but never really had a candle uh, body close or complete candle close above it. And so if this were to be more bullish, that'd be something to look for. Let's zoom in on the daily, see if it's encountering any sort of correction not so much so we do have these higher lows it is breaking above let's see what it does at that 240 ish range at the 618 if it is able to get above that i think that would be bullish for tesla even though tesla is not one of my personal favorites or at least right now um but hey you can't deny the charts and sometimes it, I encourage you guys to, to look at this uh, sometime. Just look up daily trading volume uh, in the market. Even though Tesla isn't uh, one of the top three to five stocks uh, by market cap for for a long, for a long time, and I have to check, I haven't checked recently, um, it's typically been one of the top three stocks as far as just being traded. And so sometimes that trade volume uh, is what pushes it higher, even though it doesn't always make sense. NVIDIA is another one that's traded pretty high too. So check out just trading volume. You can Google it, look for some of those charts, you know, see what's the most heavily traded stocks and it'll surprise you. It's It doesn't go purely by market cap and it, it'll kind of make sense why some stocks are maybe more elevated than you would think. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Do keep an eye on the rate cuts and what happens next week. It, again, I, even if they do 25 basis points, I, I know it'll be cause for many people to celebrate. I, I'm just going to say be cautious about it because as I showed you with the yield curve, recessions, if you are investing in this environment, you want to be cautious moving forward in the next year or so because it, at some time, I don't know when, 
it, the probability is, is that we are going to see major corrections or hard landings. And maybe it'll be when they're when everyone's celebrating a soft landing being achieved. It'll happen right after that when no one expects. So do be careful uh, investing within the next year or so. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.